Have you ever wondered how safe you are from bioterrorism in your daily life? It's a question that may loom large in this modern age. Bioterrorism and biosecurity are more than just buzzwords. They represent real, tangible threats that could touch every one of us. Whether it's the invisible enemy in the air we breathe, or the unseen danger lurking in our food and water, these threats are omnipresent. To fully grasp the gravity of this situation, let's delve into the history of bioterrorism. Bioterrorism is not a new phenomenon, it has its roots in ancient history. Delving into the annals of time, we find the first instances of bioterrorism were as crude as they were cruel. During the Middle Ages, belligerents at war often resorted to hurling plague-infected bodies over city walls during sieges. Their intent? To spread disease and panic in the besieged city, thereby weakening their enemy. Fast forward to the American frontier, and we find a more subtle yet equally devastating use of biological agents as weapons. The notorious gifting of smallpox-infected blankets to Native American populations was, in essence, an act of bioterrorism. The devastating impact of these blankets, which were often received under the guise of peace offerings, resulted in widespread death and disease. As we move forward in history, we see a shift from these primitive methods to more sophisticated forms of bioterrorism. The 20th century saw the rise of state-sponsored programs aimed at developing biological weapons. These programs often operated under the veil of secrecy, with the intent to create weapons capable of causing mass casualties. One chilling example is the anthrax attacks that occurred in the United States in the wake of the September 11th attacks. Letters laced with anthrax spores were sent to several news media offices and two U.S. senators, resulting in five deaths and 17 infections. This event underscored the destructive potential of bioterrorism, and the ease with which biological agents can be disseminated. More recently, the advent of advanced biotechnologies has raised concerns about the potential for their misuse. Genetic engineering, for instance, could be exploited to create novel, more virulent pathogens or to make existing pathogens resistant to current treatments. This shift towards the use of advanced technologies represents a new frontier in bioterrorism, while the methods have evolved, the intent remains the same, to instill fear and chaos. As we continue to grapple with the threat of bioterrorism, it is crucial to remember that understanding our past is key to protecting our future. In the face of such threats, biosecurity becomes our first line of defense. But what exactly is biosecurity? It's a set of preventive measures designed to reduce the risk of transmission of infectious diseases, quarantines pests, genetically modified organisms, and invasive species. Biosecurity has evolved drastically over the years. Its origins can be traced back to the late 19th century when nations began implementing quarantines to prevent the spread of diseases. In today's context, however, biosecurity encompasses much more. It not only includes the prevention of the spread of diseases, but also the containment of biological substances used in research and the prevention of misuse of biological technology. The role of biosecurity in preventing bioterrorist attacks is paramount. It involves the development and implementation of comprehensive strategies to counteract bioterrorism. These strategies include the establishment of proper laboratory protocols, training of personnel, and ensuring the safe transport of biological substances. A significant part of these strategies is the creation of various national and international biosecurity agencies. These agencies are responsible for developing and implementing biosecurity policies, conducting research, and coordinating with other nations to prevent and respond to bioterrorist threats. For instance, the U.S. has the National Biosurveillance Integration Center, which serves as a hub for integrating and analyzing biosurveillance information. On the international front, the World Health Organization has a dedicated department for health security and environment which works towards global health security by managing and coordinating international responses to public health risks and emergencies. But it's not just about creating agencies and protocols. Biosecurity is a culture, a mindset that needs to be adopted by individuals, communities, and nations. It's about being vigilant and proactive about recognizing the threats we face and taking steps to mitigate them. While we've made strides in biosecurity, the threats we face today are more complex and challenging than ever before. With advancements in technology, the potential for misuse grows, making the job of biosecurity professionals increasingly difficult. But with robust systems in place and a vigilant global community, we can hope to keep these threats at bay. Remember, biosecurity is our first line of defense against biological threats, and we all have a role to play in it.
The advancements in biotechnology while promising have also given rise to new threats. This statement is a chilling reminder of the dual nature of scientific progress. On one hand it offers solutions to many of our most pressing problems, but on the other, it has the potential to usher in new and unprecedented challenges. In the realm of bioterrorism, current threats are evolving at an alarming rate. One of the most significant threats we face today is the potential misuse of gene editing technology. Gene editing, particularly the revolutionary CRISPR technology, has opened up a myriad of possibilities in the field of medicine. However, in the wrong hands, it could also be used to create deadly biological weapons. Imagine a virus that has been genetically modified to be more lethal, more contagious, or resistant to existing treatments. The consequences would be devastating. Preventing these attacks is a major challenge. Unlike traditional forms of terrorism, bioterrorism is difficult to predict and even harder to trace. Biological agents can be released silently and invisibly, with symptoms often not appearing until days or even weeks later. By the time authorities realize an attack has occurred, it may already be too late. Take for instance the anthrax attacks in the United States in 2001. Letters containing anthrax spores were mailed to several news media offices and two U.S. senators, leading to five deaths. Despite a massive investigation, the source of the anthrax was never definitively proven. In more recent times, the attempted assassination of a former Russian spy in the United Kingdom in 2018 serves as another stark reminder of the threat we face. The use of a nerve agent, a chemical weapon in this instance, demonstrates that the threat of bioterrorism is not limited to the use of biological agents. The difficulty in predicting and preventing attacks is further compounded by the ease with which biological agents can be obtained and the increasing sophistication of methods used to deliver them. A vial of deadly bacteria or viruses can be easily concealed and transported, and the rise of drone technology presents a new and worrying delivery method. Another challenge we face is the lack of preparedness. Despite the clear and present danger posed by bioterrorism, many countries are woefully underprepared. Health systems are often ill-equipped to deal with a large-scale biological attack, and there is a lack of investment in research and development of new vaccines and treatments. As we grapple with these current threats, we must also consider what the future holds. The threats and challenges we face today are just the tip of the iceberg. As technology continues to advance, so too will the methods and means of bioterrorism. It's a sobering thought but one we must confront if we are to stand any chance of preventing future attacks and safeguarding our world. In a world where technology is advancing at an unprecedented rate, what does the future of bioterrorism look like? This question bears a weight that we must all share, as it concerns every individual, every nation, and indeed our collective human future. As we move further into the 21st century, the potential threats we face evolve alongside our technological advancements. One particularly alarming development is the potential use of artificial intelligence in bioterrorism. Imagine a world where a rogue AI system could design or alter biological agents, creating new pathogens or enhancing the virulence of existing ones. This isn't a dystopian science fiction plot, but a plausible reality we must prepare for. The digitization of genetic information, while opening up new vistas in healthcare and biotechnology, also poses unique challenges. Cyber bioterrorism, where hackers could potentially access and manipulate genetic data to inflict harm, is no longer a far-fetched concept. But let's not dwell solely on the threats. The same technological leaps that could be misused for harm also offer us powerful tools in our fight against bioterrorism. One such promising field is predictive modeling. By analyzing data on past outbreaks, human behavior, and environmental conditions, we can develop models to predict and potentially prevent future bioterrorist attacks. We're talking about turning the tide, about being one step ahead instead of perennially playing catch-up. Advancements in genetics offer us another potent weapon, genetic surveillance. This involves monitoring genetic information in populations to detect changes that could signal an impending bioterrorist attack. For instance, a sudden increase in antibiotic resistance genes could hint at a clandestine operation to create a superbug. In parallel with technological solutions, we must also bolster our human defenses. This means investing in education and awareness, fostering a culture of biosecurity, and training professionals who can recognize and respond quickly to bioterrorist threats. Preparation is key. We need to build robust systems that can withstand potential attacks, and this involves more than just technology. 
it means establishing clear protocols, conducting regular drills, and ensuring that lines of communication remain open and efficient. Our efforts also need to be inclusive. Bioterrorism is a global threat, and our response too, must be global. This means sharing knowledge and resources, coordinating efforts, and standing united in our resolve to protect our world. The fight against bioterrorism is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a continuous process of learning, adapting, and improving. And while the challenges are considerable, we have the tools, the knowledge, and the collective will to meet them head on. As we look to the future, it becomes clear that the fight against bioterrorism is a global effort, a collective endeavor that demands our utmost vigilance, unity, and unwavering commitment to safeguard our shared home. In the face of a threat that knows no borders, international cooperation is not just beneficial, it's essential. Bioterrorism is a global concern, one that requires a unified response from nations around the world. This shared responsibility is reflected in various international treaties and collaborations aimed at countering bioterrorism. The Biological Weapons Convention, for instance, was the first multilateral disarmament treaty banning the production of an entire category of weapons. It was a groundbreaking step towards a safer world. However, the treaty is not self-enforcing and it's up to the signatory nations to uphold their end of the agreement. Furthermore, the Global Health Security Agenda, launched in 2014, is an international initiative aimed at strengthening countries' capacities to prevent, detect, and respond to infectious disease threats, whether natural or deliberate. It is a clear testament to our collective commitment to biosecurity. The World Health Organization also plays a pivotal role in global biosecurity. Its international health regulations, revised in 2005, are designed to prevent and protect against the international spread of diseases including those potentially used in bioterrorist attacks. These regulations are legally binding meaning countries are required to report certain disease outbreaks and public health events to the WHO. But the global effort against bioterrorism isn't just about treaties and organizations, it's about people, it's about you and me. We all have a role to play in this battle. For example, scientists and researchers around the world are continuously working to understand and combat potential biological threats. Their work, often done behind the scenes, is crucial in preventing and responding to bioterrorist attacks. Healthcare workers too are on the front lines, they're trained to recognize unusual disease patterns that could indicate a bioterrorist attack. Their prompt action can save countless lives, but what about the rest of us? How can we contribute to biosecurity? Well, it's simpler than you might think. We can stay informed about the risks and realities of bioterrorism and share that knowledge with others. We can support policies and initiatives that strengthen biosecurity. We can encourage transparency and cooperation among nations, and above all, we can advocate for peace, because bioterrorism, like all forms of terrorism, thrives in conflict and division. The fight against bioterrorism is a shared responsibility. It's a battle we're all a part of, whether we realize it or not. And it's a battle we can win, not through fear or division, but through unity, knowledge, and action. So let's stand together as a global community against the threat of bioterrorism. Let's continue to build and support international collaborations and treaties. Let's value and promote the work of scientists, healthcare workers, and ordinary individuals in biosecurity. Together we can ensure a safer future. So, where does that leave us in the fight against bioterrorism? Our journey today started by asking some unsettling questions which led us down the path of history, where we discovered that bioterrorism isn't a new concept. It's been a part of warfare and conflict for centuries albeit in less sophisticated forms than we might see today. The first line of defense we realized lies in understanding the nature of these biological threats and the mechanisms through which they can cause harm. This understanding is pivotal in preparing and responding to potential threats. We then delved into the current threats and challenges, acknowledging that the landscape of bioterrorism is constantly evolving. With the surge in technology and bioengineering, the potential for misuse is enormous, making the task of staying ahead of these threats a formidable one. But it's not all doom and gloom. We also explored the future possibilities, the preparations in place, and the advancements being made in biosecurity. With the continuous global effort, we can counter these threats effectively. And that's the key here, a global effort. Bioterrorism isn't confined to any one country or region. It's a concern that transcends borders, making international cooperation and shared vigilance absolutely essential. 
Bioterrorism and biosecurity are concerns that touch every corner of our lives. It is our duty to stay informed, stay vigilant, and work together to ensure a safer world.